Hi everybody, this episode I am showing everybody how to do the Ken Burns effect, as it's been called. The Ken Burns effect is basically where you're zooming in on photos or panning across photos. It's been something used by Ken Burns, kind of one who really pioneered those sorts of looks. Actually, originally in camera, where they would zoom up on a photo or pan across a photo to add a little bit of dynamics instead of just showing a still photo. They were able to zoom up or pan across to relay different amounts of information off of stock or off of stock photos or photos pertaining to a documentary. So what we're going to show here is we've got a bunch of different photos and this is kind of building off previous episodes where I've shown how to use the motion controls and show how to do animation. If you haven't watched those, I recommend going back and watch them because I'll kind of move through these quickly. So first of all, I've got a bunch of different photos here and these are very high resolution photos. They are just above 3K here. And let's say we're working in a 1920 by 1080 timeline. I'm going to go down a sequence, create a new sequence. That is going to be 1920 by 1080. I'll do a DSLR at 24 frames per second. Hit OK. And I'm going to grab my photo here and drag them in. Before I do that actually, one thing that you can do, notice that each one of these photos is about 10 seconds long, is approximately 10 seconds long. If you want your photos to be longer than, or longer or less time than 10 seconds long, I mean you can obviously grab them and drag them into the source monitor and change the duration because these are basically infinite files. You can play on forever and change the duration of them if you wish. But let's say I want to import a bunch and I want to stay on the image about, let's say, seven seconds per image. You can actually go up to Premiere, go to Preferences, go to General, and up here you'll notice there's this still image. Under under the General tab, you'll notice there's this still image duration. Let's say we want these to last about seven seconds per image. I'm going to hit OK. I'm going to get rid of these this folder right here, and I'm going to re-import that folder. I'm going to grab that folder, drag and drop it in, and now you'll notice that these images are seven seconds long. So I'm going to grab these photos here. I'm just going to grab the entire folder and drag and drop them in. So each photo lasts seven seconds long. Now, these photos, one thing that I've covered in previous episodes under preferences in general, just to make sure I can zoom up on these, I have unchecked default scale to frame size under the general preference tab here. So it doesn't scale them automatically to 1920 by 1080 when I drop them in, and therefore you can scale up on these images without losing quality in a 1920 by 1080 timeline with higher resolution photos. If you have less resolution than this and you zoom up on them, it's just going to look crummy. So I recommend, if you can, use higher resolution photos. I'm going to hit Shift Plus, increase my track height, and hit Slash to kind of fit everything in there. And let's start here. But notice this image. Let me drop this image into my time into my source monitor. Notice this is zoomed out and this one is zoomed in. This is higher resolution. This is 1920 by 1080, so it is zooming up on it. It's cropping the image and a portion of the image is outside the timeline. If I hit fit, go down to 25%, go to my effect control, select the clip, hit my wireframe, you can see that wireframe outside the scope of my viewable image right here that's going to be shown on my 1920 by 1080 timeline. I tell this to fit and let's kind of show some Ken Burns effects here. First of all, how do I want this image to start out? Let's say I want this kind of full, the, the full image here and this is a 4x3 image in a 16 by 9 aspect ratio timeline. I'm going to select this clip, go up to my motion file, drop that down. I'm going to scale this down until I see the edges of my frame here. I don't want any black on the edge so I'm going to scale that to right there. With my wireframe I can actually move out and grab this and drag it down. If you don't see the wireframe you can just go and click on this little square right here and it will pop up the wireframe. That way you can move it and scale it without having to mess with these numerical attributes here. So that's where I kind of want the image to start. I'm going to add a dissolve to fade in. I'm going to hit command or control D and it will add a dissolve at the beginning. I press play and it fades in. Now as it moves into the next clip here. I want this to dissolve from this one to the next one. I'm going to arrow over and get right on the edit there and do a command D. So now we've got a dissolve from one clip to the next. And I can do this on all these. Actually I'm going to add a dissolve. Let's say I want to dissolve on all these. I'm going to select all my clips here and do command D. It will add a dissolve on every single clip. So it just dissolves from clip to clip to clip. Now let's say I kind of want to start out zoomed out on each one of these clips. I can actually select this first clip that I already zoomed out to, to 61 on the scale. Notice these other ones are at 100. So what I can do is I can copy this one here, select it and do Command C or Control C on a PC, select all these others, right click, and we're going to paste attributes from this one that I copied right there. And now we're going to paste our motion attributes, which is basically our scale right now, and hit OK. And notice these zoom out. As long as they're all the same size, which some of them aren't, because we have some vertical shots over here as opposed to horizontal shots. But it did zoom most of these out to start off with. 
So now I'm going to go to the beginning. We play, press play, it fades in, we go to the next one, and it dissolves to the next one, and then it dissolves to the next one. But let's say we want to do some scale and positioning on these things here. Say we want to scale into this guy looking into the monitor right there. So what we're going to do is I'm going to play and say, where do I want this to start? Let's have it fade in, and I don't want it to start zooming until right now, like three seconds into my timeline. I want it to do a slow zoom up to this guy's face. And I actually want this to last longer. So I'm going to hit B for my ripple edit. I'm going to extend this by five seconds right there, about four seconds. So now let's go to the beginning of the timeline, press play, and right about now I want it to start. I'm going to pause, select the clip, go up to the effect controls panel, and I'm going to change, I'm going to add a keyframe on position and scale, because I'm going to change those two attributes. As I press play, and I'm going to count about how long I want it to do the move. Let's say about right there, I want it to do about four or five seconds. I'm going to add a keyframe on my position and add a keyframe on my scale. I've got four total keyframes here. Now I'm going to land on these keyframes. I'm already got my playhead right on them, but let's show you how to land. I'm going to hit previous keyframe and the next keyframe. I'm going to land on these ones. I'm going to change these keyframes. These ones are my pivot point where the, the chain starts. So I want to make sure that I've landed on these exact keyframes. I'm going to arrow over and make sure that I've landed on those. So I want to make sure that I zoom up on these keyframes. And this is going to be the pivot point, and then it will move from this point to this point, and it will zoom up, and it's going to change position as well. Because watch what happens as we zoom up here. He's cut out of the frame now. So now on this keyframe, I've changed that scale attribute, and I'm going to change my position attribute and get that exactly where I want it to be. Now it zooms up to that guy right there. So let's move back, press play, and it does the zoom. There you go. So what I want to do here is I want to, let's make this look a little more gradual. I'm going to right click on these two, go to temporal interpolation and ease out of those keyframes and ease into these ones. Now as we play, it will gradually start up and do the zoom and gradually come to a stop there on this guy. But let's say we want that to last longer. I'm going to grab that. I'm going to drag it over just a little bit to make it last longer. And now it goes slower and gradually lands on them. Now, as we do the transition, notice there's one transition. What we're going to do is we're going to go into this next clip and I'm going to do a slow zoom up to this little group of people right here. But we want it to be zooming the entire time as it transitions from this shot to this shot here. We'll show you how to do a pan in a minute. Let's do two different, two other different little options here. We're going to gradually zoom up, but we're going to do it while the entire image, while the entire image is on screen. It's going to be slowly zooming. So let's go up and change our position. Right now, I'm going to do it kind of just in the middle here, and then I'm going to change where my keyframes exist. I'm going to do position and scale, move down a little bit, and add two keyframes on position and scale. So this is where I want it to start. So these first keyframes are fine. I'm going to go to the second keyframe here and tell it to end at a different point. We're going to zoom up and I'm going to move my position over to the right a little bit so we see these five people right there. So now it moves from this point and know how it moves, notice how it moves over to this point here. I'm going to, and I'm not going to have to do a, a temporal uh, Bezier curve coming into the shot or out of it because what I'm going to do, watch this. Here's the dissolve into the shot and here's the dissolve out of the shot. I'm going to tilt it over this. I'm going to grab my endpoints and I'm going to grab them and have them start at the very, very beginning, drag it to the very beginning. So it's going to actually start moving before the dissolve actually occurs. And I'm going to have it keep doing that until the very end right there. So there's no temporal interpolation on these things. It's just going to start out zooming and it's going to fade out while it's zooming into the next shot. And that's why it's important to add the dissolves first, because if, if you have to add the dissolves later, then you're going to have to drag those keyframes back. Because right here, notice this is where the shot actually starts, but this is the dissolve into the shot. This is the edit point, and this is the dissolve into the shot, these little darker regions right here. So now let's watch this and see what it does. So it goes from this shot and does this gradual. Notice how it dissolves in, and it's moving as it does the dissolve. And as it dissolves out, it will keep moving. See that? And now let's do for the last one, let's start on these guys over here and we're going to pan over to this guy. So what I'm gonna do is have this already zoomed up. I'm not going to put any sort of keyframing on the zoom. I'm going to get this where I want it to kind of start position wise. Right there, so we'll start on this guy in the sunglasses and then we will gradually move over. And we'll have this start about two seconds in. We'll have it fade in so we can see this guy. The narration's talking about this guy a little bit. And then we'll have it start right there at a position keyframe. Play right about there. 
and we will have it end. Now look, as I start dragging it on the position, I didn't add a keyframe, I added a keyframe automatically. And we're going to have it move over to this other guy with the sunglasses right here. So now as we move this back, watch, it hits that keyframe, it does the move over. It's very kind of strobe because it does the move too quickly for 24 frames per second progressive scan. So I'm gonna go down in, in my timeline, hit B for my ripple edit tool, expand that by about uh, four or five seconds. And now I'm going to select the clip, go up to my controls panel, and I'm gonna make that last longer. And now I'm going to right click, do temporal interpolation and tell it to ease out. Right here, gonna right click and do temporal interpolation, tell it to ease in. Let's take a look at that, see how that looks. And it gradually goes into the move, there we go, and pans over to reveal the other guy in the sunglasses and gradually comes to a stop. Let's say we wanna do a slow zoom on another shot here. What we can do is we can go grab this shot. This is kinda of cool as well. I'm gonna select this clip, I'm going up here and hit tilde, and I'm going to select all of these keyframes. I'm gonna hit shift and select these two keyframes, shift, select these two. So those are all blue. I've got all four of those keyframes. If they're dragged in here, you can drag a marquee over them and select them all. I'm going to hit Command C and copy those keyframes. I'm going to go to a shot down here. Let's say we want to apply that same sort of timing to this clip here. I'm going to select this clip. Let's tilt it in here. And I'm going to hit Home, go to the beginning of this clip here. I'm going to grab this playhead and move it to the beginning of the clip. I'm going to do Command V and paste. And notice it pasted those keyframes in here, exact same length, right inside this shot here. So now as it moves from this shot to the next, we have the exact same duplicate move that we had in a previous clip. And notice it keeps moving as it fades out of it. So let's take a look at these shots really quick. Let's go to the very beginning of our timeline. Hit tilde over this, go full screen. So it gradually starts moving into this fellow right here. There's our little zoom and position change. As it fades to the next, it's already moving as we do our slow zoom to this photo here. Fades out. Now we're going to do our pan across. And that is our basic Ken Burns effect. Now as we get to the next shot, you'll notice what we copied and pasted those keyframes to a new shot. And there we go. Just so it has moving shot to moving shot, I'm going to select this clip, tilde over this just to look at it, go to the very beginning of the clip here, and Command V and paste. So it does the exact same thing. I'm not sure if it will work on this exact shot, but let's take a look. There we go, zooming up. Yeah, the position's in a weird spot, so I'm going to actually land on my last position. I'm going to grab these keyframes, drag them in a little bit so I can see what's where I'm changing it, and I'm going to change my position, and we're going to zoom up to this cool guy. We're zooming up to cool guys in sunglasses. There we go, and now I can grab these keyframes here. I just drag them over so I can see where they're going and drag them back to the end of the clip. So now watch as it transitions into this shot. We're already moving, we're already zooming in, and as it, as it transitions to the next shot, we're, we're still moving on this, and we're moving on this as it moves in, and there's no stopping. So it looks very natural, looks good. And that's basically the Ken Burns effect. If you have any questions or comments, please post it, and I'll try to answer them. Thank you.